Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. And Spain has rejected a new European proposal for energy, but more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your continuing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, Spain has decided to stand up to the European Commission and has rejected a new energy proposal. As we can see here, Spain refuses to classify nuclear energy and gas as green as proposed by Europe. Spain has reiterated this Sunday its rejection of the European Commission's proposal to include nuclear energy and gas generation in the classification table of green options in the community framework, something that would be a step backwards and a wrong signal for the financial markets. The EC has circulated a draft proposal to the European Union member states in which it proposes to give a green rating to projects that replace coal and emit up to 270 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. In response to this draft green taxonomy, the Vice President and Minister for Ecological Transition and Demographic Challenge, Teresa Rivera, has stressed that regardless of whether investments can continue to be made in one or the other, we consider that they are not green or sustainable energies. So Spain standing up to the European Commission and rejecting its latest energy proposal. And I don't think Spain is alone. I believe Germany and Austria have also said no to this proposal. Now in the last news video that I did last week before New Year's, the Omicron variant of COVID-19 was spreading like wildfire throughout Spain. But what has the New Year brought as far as COVID-19 is concerned? Well, as we can see here, a slight rise in hospital admissions overshadows curb on contagion in many autonomous communities. The epidemiological situation follows the trend of a reduction in the number of infections that began on New Year's Eve in several autonomous communities, although this decrease does not follow the same line as the number of admissions as there has been an increase in hospitalizations. Catalonia, Cantabria, Madrid and Galicia are some of the regions that reflect this reality, with data referring to the first day of the year. A drop in infections compared to the increase in hospital pressure, with more admissions and more patients in the ICU for COVID. In Catalonia, COVID-related sick leave has tripled in three weeks from 27,249 in the second week of December to 79,484 at the end of 2021. And that's basically the main problem currently in Spain. With so many people on sick leave, companies and businesses are having trouble getting a full workforce. And unfortunately, as we saw in some autonomous communities, for example, Catalonia and Madrid, hospital admissions are increasing. Now, if you haven't realized this already, the current strain of COVID-19 Omicron is the fastest spreading virus in history. Omicron is the fastest spreading known virus in history. It is unrivaled, according to Roby Bhattacharya, a physician and infectious disease expert at Massachusetts General Hospital. Just a month after its detection in Southern Africa, the new variant of the coronavirus was already dominant in countries around the world with more cases than ever before. It's an incredibly rapid spread, says Bhattacharya. The researcher does a napkin calculation to imagine what a race between Omicron and its most logical adversary, the measles, one of the most contagious viruses, would be like. One person with measles infects an average of 15 others in the absence of vaccination, compared to the six people Bhattacharya assumes for Omicron. The key, however, is the so-called generation time, the number of days from the time the first person is infectious until those infected by that person are also infectious. So there we go, Omicron, the fastest spreading known virus in history. Wow! Now let's have a look at the health situation in Spain, although the data hasn't been updated since last week. And at the end of last week, the accumulated incidence rate stood at 1,775. There was a record number of daily cases with 161,688 cases recorded. Hospital pressure remained at medium risk at 8.8% and there were 10,768 COVID patients hospitalised around the country. And ICU pressure was at high risk at 19.4% and there were 1,803 COVID patients in ICU at the end of last week. Now, not only did COVID cases finish the year on a high, inflation did too. And annual inflation in Spain rose to 6.7% in December, the highest level in nearly three decades. After a year of inflation rates in Spain that have not been seen in a very long time, December has not bucked the trend. 
consumer price inflation, CPI, in the last month of 2021 rose 6.7% compared to December 2020, according to advanced data published today by the National Statistics Institute. This indicator has been rising since March after an anomalous deflationary period caused by the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic in early 2020. December marks the ninth month with a rate above 2%, which is the limit that the European Central Bank considers to be optimal. Drifting below this target means a serious compromise of economic growth, and going above it, as has been the case since April 2021, puts household purchasing power at risk, forcing consumers to spend more to cover basic expenses at the cost of other spending. So there we go, inflation finishing the year at 6.7%, the highest level in nearly three decades. And I've definitely noticed that my household purchasing power is at risk. Now it seems that today is a day of records, record COVID cases, record inflation, and also record temperatures around Spain. The year 2022 has started with very spring-like weather. In much of the country, the sun has been the protagonist, and in the north of Spain, temperatures have been recorded up to 10 degrees above the usual for this time of year. In the north, it has reached 21 degrees in places like Galicia, and in the interior of Andalusia and Alicante, it has reached 25 degrees. Many citizens have taken the opportunity to start this 2022 with outdoor activities or going to the beach. So record temperatures in almost all of Spain, and even here in Portugal, the weather has been very, very good indeed. Now, as we saw a minute ago, Spain is experiencing record inflation at the moment, and in 2022, obviously, the prices of many things are going to increase. And these are the things that will rise the most in price in 2022. 2022 will be a difficult year economically, not only because of the coronavirus crisis, which affects all countries in very different ways, but also because of tax and other increases that affect the consumer. Stamps, tolls, electricity, gas, registration tax, self-employment tax, tobacco, wine and beer are some of the things that are going up in price as the year begins. Car prices are also rising due to the increase in registration tax, which will be similar to that of 2021, but in total figures a car will cost 800 euros more expensive. So price increases and tax increases going to affect the majority of us living in Spain in 2022. And if you had plans to buy a new car in 2022, it's going to cost you around 800 euros more than it would have done in 2021. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Wendy. Dear Mia looks very contented. Happy New Year to you and your family. And thank you for all your interesting blogs throughout this difficult year. Yeah, Wendy, thanks for the comment and a happy new year to you and your family too. And you're right, Mia here in Portugal is very, very happy indeed. And one thing I've discovered is that she absolutely loves the beach. So happy family, happy dog. What more can I ask for in 2022? One here from Peter. Hi, Stu. Looks like you are away from Madrid. Just read today in the UK Mail that inflation in Spain has soared to the highest level for more than 30 years, although inflation is happening worldwide. Happy New Year, Pedro. Yeah, Pedro, thanks for the comment, and you're right, inflation in Spain currently at levels not seen in around 30 years. As we saw before, December finished with an inflation rate of around 6.7%, and consumers are starting to feel the pinch. So it looks like 2022 is going to be a bad year for a lot of people's purses and wallets, unfortunately. One here from John. Hi, Stuart. I wish you and the rest of your family a very happy new year. Thank you very much for creating such great videos with all the Spanish news and travel info. Look forward to more great videos for 2022. Best wishes and may the force be with you. From John from Ireland. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment and a happy new year to you and yours there in Ireland. Glad you liked the content and don't worry, plenty more planned for 2022. I plan to continue with the news videos in 2022 and with a bit of luck, there won't be any travel restrictions, so I'll be able to hit the road a little bit more often as well. One here from Tommy, happy new year, Stuart. I'm a long time viewer, first time commenter. I started following your videos back in Los Angeles where me and my partner lived for many years. I enjoy your videos very much. Thank you. We moved to Portugal a year ago. We live on the countryside in Santanen County and have a natural cosmetic store in the city of Santanen. I saw you caught one of these crazy local drivers on your dash cam in Paniche. I'm scared every time when I get behind the wheel. What do you think of these Portuguese drivers? Yeah, Tommy, thanks for the comment. Glad you liked the content and I hope your business is going well there in Santarém. And when it comes to Portuguese drivers, you're right, they can be a little bit crazy, but it's a lot better driving here now than it was 30 years ago 
when I first came to this country. But to be honest, driving here in Portugal is not all that different to driving in Spain. But one of the big differences I notice is on the motorways where you get a difference in speeds. Some people go very, very fast and other people seem to go very, very slow, which in my opinion is very dangerous. But as I always say, it is what it is and you just have to get used to it. One here from Michael, glad you're back on the road. I noticed that some of the roads there are in pretty poor condition. Is Peniche a popular resort as I've never heard of it? Yeah, Michael, thanks for the comment. And the simple answer is that no, Peniche is not a popular tourist resort. If you compare it with some of the places down there in the Algarve, that is. But it is becoming more and more popular as the years go by, especially with surf tourism. There was a world-class surfing event held here for many, many years, and it really put this part of Portugal on the map. In fact, it's unbelievable to see the amount of people from the north of Europe that come here and learn to surf. So not as popular as the south of Portugal, but it's getting more and more popular as the years go by. And finally, one here from Steve. Happy New Year, Stuart, to all your family. Thank you for helping to keep us sane with your updates. We've now booked our hotel for the 18th of February, so fingers crossed. Please keep updates coming and keep safe. Yes, yeah, Steve, thanks for the comment and a happy new year to you too. And I'll just take this moment to wish everybody out there a happy new year. And I hope everybody has a fantastic 2022. Hopefully all will go well for your planned trip on the 18th of February. And hopefully this Omicron variant will be under control by then. And don't worry, I'll continue to roll out the updates. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.